Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome. Yes, I'm not Brett Devine. I've got less hair, less muscles, but maybe, maybe a little bit better voice than he does. I am Dan Bach, pinch hitting for Brett tonight. He'll be back next week. He's living it up down in Disney. So uh, guess what? I get to talk with two of the smartest guys we've got weekly here on Roto Grinders. Of course, it's Pro Football Focus. And joining us as always, it's Tyler Beaker. It's Scott Barrett and fellas. Uh, honored to be doing a show with you guys. Thanks for having me. What's up, Dan? Yeah, it, it, it's a pleasure. Uh, th thanks for having us. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, we're going to kind of keep to the same format that we that, you know, Britt does. We'll talk about uh, positions and players and who we like and who we don't. The studs, the duds. We'll get into the PFF, um, uh, you know, advanced stats, the matchups, so much stuff here. So, uh, you know, week seven upon us. And, you know, it's crazy. This season, you know, it's not quite half over, but it's getting there. Tyler. Now, quick recap. How did week six turn out for you? I, I was looking back at the show sheet, and if the show sheet was right, you guys should have had a pretty good week last week. Yeah, week six was a very profitable week for me. Uh, if that one James Conner reception where he leaned over and almost got it, if that would have counted for a touchdown, I'd have been looking at a very, very good day. Uh, but it was still a very profitable one. Um, hoping to build on that success and translate it into week seven. Yeah, no question. That's what we're trying to do here. We're going to put our best foot forward and making that happen. And uh, certainly glad to have you guys with us here today. Uh, and if you're not a subscriber over there on Pro Football Focus, we're going to give you lots of reasons today why you need to be. So uh, before we get into that, a couple things of housekeeping here I want to tell you guys about we got happening at rotogrinders.com. First and foremost, if you have not checked out SharpSide, that is our new sports betting platform. Not only do we have it on desktop, we also have it on the app. The app is terrific. It's got all the bets you could possibly want. You swipe. You know, I can't swipe left and right. I'm a married man. I can't do that, but I can do it on the SharpSide app because you're swiping your bets left and right. And uh, it's a great way to kind of be able to look at the different lines. We've got player props. We've got team props. It's got everything on it. And the cool thing is, also running a lot of contests where you can win uh, prizes, including uh, entries over there on FanDuel. So check it out over at sharpside.com. Only have it for iOS for the time being, uh, but download it if you have that iPhone and check it out for yourself. I think you'll enjoy it. And then of course, Fanball, we uh, have kind of partnered up with them in the last week or so, and we're really promoting their new auction format. And auctions, of course, something that's been big in season long for a while, but not really in daily, but uh, their new auction format is intense. Like you almost need to take some Adderall before you do it because there's so much going on on the screen. You're bidding on four players at a time that uh, it might sound like, why would I want to do that? Because it's crazy amount of fun. So check that out. Fanball.com slash Roto Grinders, $20 matching deposit. Uh, over there and it's a brand new innovative way to play fantasy sports and we've got live shows every Wednesday Thursday and Friday right before our NBA block uh, spotlighting that where you can play against us so check that out over here on rotogrinders.com all right let's segue into week seven and we will start at the quarterback position and Tyler I'm gonna leave the floor to you uh, with your stud tell me who you want to pay up for this week at QB. Yeah, week seven is very odd when it comes to quarterbacks on DraftKings. I feel like it's very soft pricing. You can go almost anywhere. Uh, just almost depends on your build and if you're trying to target a specific game. Um, a guy and a game that I want to target is this Panthers-Eagles game, uh, specifically the quarterback Cam Newton. 5,900 on DK just seems way too low for a guy who has the type of ceiling that Cam has. Uh, this Philadelphia defense has become an ideal pass funnel with teams averaging under 80 rushing yards per game. That's the second lowest in the league, while teams are opting to pass against them a league-high 68.8% of the time. Philadelphia's pass rush applies pressure at a league-high 16.3% pressure rate. Uh, that's based on our um, offensive line, defensive line matchup chart. And that presents a dangerous opportunity to flush Cam out of the pocket, where he can pick up yardage on the ground. Um, we've already seen plenty of quarterbacks have a lot of success targeting the secondary and he's got a healthy Greg Olson back, plenty of weapons at each level. I really like Cam Newton here for both cash and tournaments. 
Yeah, I think um, I think that one thing that's not really being talked about all that much is the return uh, of Greg Olson. I mean, he played almost every single offensive staff last week. So, uh, you know, the numbers weren't terrible. Um, they weren't great, but seven targets, I think 40 some odd yards. Uh, but clearly a guy who's, who's been one of the top targets for Cam. Now, not the best matchup for tight ends against Philadelphia, but at least it is somebody that, that he is comfortable with. And, and I, I'm with you too. Like I think cam is a terrific choice this week because we'll get into some of the value options that a lot of people are talking about, but the floor on cam is, is great. I don't think he's been less than 18 fantasy points on DraftKings this season. And that's really what I kind of look for in my cash games. Now, Scott, um, you gave me the old, not available for high dollar studs this week. And that's fine. I don't want you to talk about somebody you don't like, but I do. I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here a little bit with why didn't Jared Goff potentially make that stud this week? He's not a dud for you, but it feels like he's in a pretty good spot this week as, as strong favorites. And, uh, you know, the price is not crazy on him. And I've seen a lot of our Roto Grinders guys, you know, have him as uh, potentially a core play. What's your thoughts on Goff? Yeah, so that's actually the the notes I'm staring at right now. It just says NA not applicable. Dot dot dot. Maybe Jared Goff if you want to get cute. And uh, I get it. You're, you're right. You know, San Francisco a little bit better on the ground. Uh, when the the issue is, San Francisco like desperately is just such a uh, run heavy team. They're not going to go pass heavy unless like you really really make them go pass heavy. Uh, and that's that's the concern here for sure. Um, also, uh, Todd Gurley is just like such a massive, uh, um, you know, bell cow for this offense. Uh, he dominates all the work near the end zone. Uh, you know, he's heavily involved as a pass catcher and a runner. Uh, so he's the guy really I'm targeting. Uh, but yeah, it, it makes sense for tournaments for sure. We, we've seen blow up spots for him before. The efficiency's there. It's just a uh, a matter of uh, if he's going to get unleashed in this offense. He's not a guy I'm, I'm really uh, excited to play, but, but of the expensive guys, he's, he's one of the best for sure for tournaments. Well, I, the one thing I like about him this week too is, you know, Cooper Cup's going to be out. So I feel like maybe the targets are going to be concentrated down to, you know, two guys instead of three, which makes it a little bit easier in roster construction because, you know, seemingly, you know, playing golf, you didn't know who it was going to be. Was it going to be Cooks? Was it going to be Woods? Was it going to be Cup? Well, I don't think suddenly Josh Reynolds takes all those Cooper Cup targets. And uh, and if you think he does, well, then guess what? You can get him for dirt cheap uh, across the industry. But that's one thing that I'm looking at. So you like the the values. So give me the value names that uh, that you're looking at at QB this week. Uh, th- there's, there's really a ton to like, uh, you know, Blake Bortles, no Leonard Fournette in a pretty good matchup. Joe Flacco in a great matchup. Dak Prescott, you know, he's running the ball now. That's exciting. Uh, even more than that, uh, C.J. Beathard's probably my favorite, but Tyler's going to talk about him. He averages 20.1 fantasy points per game in games he started and finished throughout his career. That's more than Tom Brady and Drew Brees over that stretch. Uh, but Jameis Winston, Baker Mayfield, those are the two guys – uh, I'm really excited to play for tournaments. It's the second highest over under on the main slate. These are two of the guys I was high higher on than almost anyone in uh, uh, redraft leagues this year. Uh, Baker Mayfield, I, I penned a 2,500 word love letter as to why he's a generational talent. Uh, Jameis Winston, he was the guy who's selling out, going all out to to target in drafts. Like obviously, hurt me had to had to bench him when Ryan Fitzpatrick started going off, but shout out to Todd Monken because as a unit, Tampa Bay's quarterbacks averaged 35 fantasy points per game. Second closest is the Drew Brees, Taysom Hill combination. That's still like four points per game behind. Uh, the problem is, and we can talk about this when we, we get to the, uh, the, the, the remixed opportunity knock segment, but Cleveland's defense is really tough um, against the pass. Uh, and then, and then Baker Mayfield up against a historically bad Tampa Bay defense that uh, he ranked dead last among all past defenses this past decade in opposing passer rating, 129.5 passing yards allowed per game, 33, 66.8 passing touchdowns allowed per game, 3.2 interception percentage, 
uh, really, I could keep going. And their run defense is great. They rank fourth best in yards per carry allowed. So could see this uh, for sure being a pass-heavy shootout. Uh, keep an eye on Baker Mayfield's ankle injury. But uh, I think that's uh, the, the quarterbacks I'm going to play this week. Yeah, I think Mayfield is super sharp. And I I like him. He's my favorite cheap quarterback this week. You mentioned a couple that, you know, Blake Bortles isn't really on our list, but like I woke up this morning and checked our way too early, which is fine because people like it, but way too early in the week to get too enamored with it, but ownership projections. And he was sitting number one this week. And that means that people are going back to playing Blake Bortles in cash. And I can't endorse that. I, I, this is a guy who has had, I think, three single-digit games or darn close to it this year. And the price is cheap, but I, I'm not a Bortles and Cash guy, and I think some people are going to be. Instead, um, Tyler, I think if people are going to go down, they're going to go to your guy, C.J. Beathard. Um, talk me – you know, I mean, Scott already made some pretty good points about him. But sell me on him because I'm not sold at all on C.J. Beathard as being like rock solid cash game quarterback versus a pretty damn legit pass rush here in the Rams. Sell me on Beathard. Yeah, so I'm a big proponent of trying to smash in three top shelf running backs in cash games. I want that high floor that you know you can get with those backs and the receiving upside that they carry. Um, and in order to get that, I'm looking down at Beathard, pretty cheap here on DraftKings, just 4,800. He's done really well in his start so far this season, not just uh, over the past couple of years. Um, in his three starts, he's averaging over 20 fantasy points on FanDuel, 22 fantasy points on DK. He's also averaged over 20 rushing yards per game. Um, dating all the way back to the beginning of 2017, giving you a half touchdown worth of fantasy points right off the bat there with some rushing up equity. Um, the 49ers are projected to be trailing at home as 10 plus dogs. We just saw over the past three weeks that Case Keenum threw for 300 yards against this Rams defense. Russell Wilson threw for three touchdowns and Kirk Cousins did both 300 and three touchdowns. I like Beathard a bit more for cash as I really don't see a 30 point explosion in his range of outcomes. Um, which is kind of what you need to take down a GPP nowadays in large field tournaments. Um, but I think 20 points is very viable for Beathard, and I think it's a safe cash play for that. I will say under 20 fantasy points for CJ. In fact, I'll say under 15. I, I, I'm also worried a little bit. This is a short week. You know, they did play on Monday Night Football. And just I'm just not comfortable rolling him in cash games against this defense on a short week. I mean, it's the best team, I think, in football here. And the Rams, I get it. We deal in the salary cap. You want Todd Gurley on your teams. He's an easy way to make that happen. Um, but I feel like there's a little bit of chasing going on from Beathard from what we saw on Monday Night Football. And uh, I personally am not going to do it, but I think a lot of people are. So I'm not going to call him a dud, but I'll probably be contrarian and probably go to Cam for my cash game quarterback. All right, give me the the duds, the avoids here, Tyler, for this week. Uh, it's actually a guy that Scott mentioned earlier, uh, Dak Prescott, someone that I'll be fading. Uh, he just went 11 for 82 and one on the ground. Um, that completely elevated his fantasy stats and something that we should not expect going on a weekly basis. Prior to that game, he had 11 carries in his last three games combined. Um, the Redskins are also brutal for pace with opponents averaging the fourth fewest snaps per game against them. So this is going to be a slow knock them out, give the ball to Zeke a ton uh, game that I'm expecting here. I'm going to let others chase Dex outlier. And another guy that I'm going to be fading this week is Deshaun Watson. He looked every bit like a player with a broken rib and a punctured lung last week. Buffalo didn't make things any easier for him, sacking him seven times. Now it's Jacksonville's turn, who ranks top five in our pressure rate, and they're in need of a big bounce back after last week's meltdown. I can endorse both of those. Uh, Scott, tell me about your dud of the week at quarterback. Who are you, who are you not playing? Uh, well, yeah, Deshaun Watson, you know, looked super unimpressive last week, but you got to give a lot of credit to Buffalo's defense, and that's, and that's why I think uh, – Andrew Luck is a fade. Uh, you know, there's no way Derek Anderson keeps this game close. Buffalo ranks second best in schedule just in fantasy points per game, third best in fantasy points per drop back, fifth best in pressures forced per drop back. Uh, also, just regarding Dak, you know, uh, just played two uh, man heavy defenses, gets his zone heavy defense in 
Washington this week. Uh, typically, zone-heavy defenses are tougher to run on. All right, let's move on into the opportunity knocks segment. And uh, Devin, go ahead and fire up the screen share here. And we're going to do a little bit differently this week because I one of my favorite things of the week is waiting for the Mike Beers tweet and the uh, Scott Barrett retweet of <laughs> this, what you're seeing right here. And uh, this is a, a chart that uh, I believe you two guys have been put together for a, a couple of years. I know I started following this big time last year. Explain exactly what this PPR allowed above average opponents per game is um, and what we should look at. And are there any like noisy aspects to what we're seeing here uh, because I think it's pretty fascinating. Yeah. So we're doing a schedule adjusted fantasy points per game uh, of all the defenses. Uh, we we're, 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 we've like covered all of our bases here. So, you know, if um, a starting quarterback goes down uh, halfway through a game and a backup comes in, we're, we're, we have that sort of adjusted um, but, uh, yeah, so, so we tweet this out every single week, usually beers does. Um, and you could look on the screen right now, you'll see, um, the number one defense to target quarterbacks with is Tampa Bay. That's no surprise. Cleveland is actually, uh, the toughest defense to opposing quarterbacks. Uh, that doesn't look great for my Jameis Winston call. Um, and it's a legitimate concern. It, it is a, it is a really tough matchup. Um, running backs, uh, Arizona, uh, although what I'll do on my own for running backs is, uh, I'll, I'll look at total fantasy points allowed and then I'll break it up by rushing and receiving. So Arizona, you know, they're kind of beatable everywhere, but far more so on the ground. So if you have, uh, if they're playing two running backs, uh, ones like, um, a pass catching type ones, a, a, a you know, ground and pound type. You want to play the ground and pound. Uh, then there's wide receivers and then there's tight ends. Uh, the saints actually were our number one defense last year against uh, opposing tight ends. They're number one again this year. And then uh, if you'll scroll down uh, beers in his second part of the tweet has it for wide receivers broken down and that's broken down by um, uh, fantasy points. So, I don't know, no, by, by opportunities. So the wide receiver one is just the guy who uh, is seeing the most targets. So you see wide receiver ones, uh, believe it or not, the toughest to play against is the Giants. I know that seems crazy. Janoris Jenkins is giving up a lot of points, uh, but that's exactly the case. Wide receiver twos, uh, you don't want to play Chicago, I guess, because Chicago has been so good against wide receiver ones. Maybe it's something like Indianapolis last year where they really sold out against wide receiver ones. So it opens a lot more volume to uh, the, the tertiary guys. Um, Saints, that makes sense too. Marshall and Lattimore is a fantastic shadow. Ken Crawley, uh, very weak in coverage. Um, yeah. Well, let, let's talk about, you know, I'm seeing New Orleans here. I mean, they yeah. look epically bad. I mean, we're like plus 14 for them. And then you got plus 10 for Tampa, and then it goes all the way down to plus 5.4 for the Chargers. So they're like almost three times worse, uh, according <laughs> to this metric, I guess, than the third worst team. That's really, really bad. So looking at this, should I just be firing John Brown and Crabtree into my lineups and, and be collecting my money at the end of the day? Yeah. So, so are you looking at the, the second tweet? Uh, that, no, I, I don't, down, I don't know that I have the second tweet. I'm, I only have the, uh, the opponents, the total opponents average per game. Um, and they've got new Orleans at plus 14.2. Okay. So, so if you'll just like click on, uh, the, the, the first tweet, there's a, a tweet tagged right underneath it that breaks down the wide receivers, wide receiver one, two, three, if you can't pull it up, that's fine. But, uh, let me just say that the, so the saints, yep. the are they're, atrocious but uh they're actually really good against wide receiver ones that makes sense marshall and Lattimore typically shadows second worst against wide receiver twos and worst against wide receiver threes uh so willie sneed is in play for sure uh they've given up a ton of fantasy points to uh opposing slot wide receivers um i can pull that up right now they've given up um 
looks like the the eighth most. Um, but really, the who I want to play is John Brown because not only have they given up the most uh, fantasy points per game to deep uh, to wide receivers on deep passes by a ton, um, but also you know the matchup against uh, Ken Crowley is uh, is is really attractive. Um, I have it right here. Ken Crowley has given up the uh, looks like fourth most fantasy points of all cornerbacks this season. So John Brown, he's also like an ideal tournament play, just yeah. dominating in terms of air yards, deep targets, uh, even near end zone work. So he, he's definitely a guy I like a lot. Yeah, no question. Uh, that's really interesting. Again, if you want to follow beers, it's at beers water. Um, you know, one of the smartest guys out there. And if you follow Scott at Scott bear DFB, he usually gives these, a little bit of a retweet. One thing that I found kind of interesting too about this week too is if you look at the running backs, you got Arizona not on the main slate, Atlanta not on the main slate. And this is the running backs that, you know, given up the the most uh, opponents or uh, allowed fantasy points above average. Arizona, Atlanta, Kansas City all not on the the main slate. So the worst in this category would be Miami this week. So Tyler, I'm we can kind of segue this a little bit into the um, into the running back. And, you know, he's not on the list anywhere here, but uh, what do we think of carry on Johnson's prospects potentially this week? I think he's under 5k on DraftKings, And uh, you know, I'm seeing a lot of people talk about like Peyton Barber as a, as a potential value option. I'm not really wanting to go that route if I don't have to, uh, carry on Johnson caught my eye a little bit. What do you think? Yeah, it's a good matchup, but uh, he's just not a player that I'm normally apt to drafting. Uh, I like guys that I know are going to get a ton of touches. They're still in that three-way committee. Um, he's just not a player that I typically target. Yeah, the committee is the biggest issue because, you know, if it gets down to like the one-yard line, they're going to give it to LeGarrette Blunt, and we're all going to hit our head and say, why is this guy <laughs> still in the league? Um, all right, let's get into your stud now. And uh, not a surprise here, you know, both the studs from you and Scott, you know, I don't blame you. Studs are studs for a reason, but Ezekiel Elliott, uh, talk about him. He's your stud this week. Yeah, you mentioned it just a few seconds ago, but week seven doesn't have many slam dunks here on the main slate. It's slim pickings. And uh, Zeke's a guy that um, I'm not necessarily eager to play but he has such a high volume of touches. Um, like no player is seeing a high per, higher percentage of his team's available touches than Zeke. Um, it's over the 50% mark, which is unreal. Um, but again, I'm just trying to prioritize touches when it comes to this. And while the pace with Washington isn't really that desirable, um, Mark Ingram did have his way with this defense, going to 20 plus fantasy points, reaching the end zone twice against them two weeks ago. Um, I know it was last year, but the last time Zeke faced this group, he ran for 150 yards on the ground and scored twice. I'm not going to really bank on that stat, but I do think he sees enough volume and this game um, revolves just around rushing where I think it's just Zeke's show. And uh, like I said, there's so few stud running backs to rely on this week. I think Zeke's one of the few that you can. Yeah. And, you know, we can kind of take Kamara out of the mix. You know, when you looked at, at, at that last uh, chart, you know, you had Baltimore right there just, you know, killing opposing running backs here. And, you know, that leaves the other stud is, is Todd Gurley. So we get, to, we get to hear Scott tell us about why Todd Gurley's, uh, you know, the best player in the league. And then I get to question whether or not we want to play him if he's got ridiculous ownership in GPPs this week for maybe the first time all year because he hasn't been a, a widely owned guy but uh talk me into Todd Gurley here I mean cash games it's pretty obvious yeah he he's been awesome uh so he scored at least 20 fantasy points in each of his last 10 games and he averages 31.9 fantasy points per game over that stretch that's ridiculous uh that's ridiculous. he is he, he has 10.4 total expected touchdowns next closest player is only 6.4 he leaves all players in expected fantasy points. He averages 23.4. Uh, that would rank best by any player this decade, and it's significantly more than the 19.4 he averaged in his near-record-breaking season last year. Uh, but not just that, but he, he leads all players in yardage market share. Uh, this is over the past two seasons, and for the most part this season. 
yardage market share, touchdown market share, touch market share, fantasy point market share, expected fantasy point market share, expected touchdown market share. I, I could just keep going. <laughs> but basically what I'm saying is he's on the best offense in football. He's one of the best players in football. He's seeing uh, arguably the best uh, volume in football. Uh, and he's definitely seeing the largest share of his team's usage of any player in football. He's almost unfadable, I think. Um, and, you know, we could go back to our chart. San Francisco ranks 10th worst schedule adjusted fantasy points per game. Rams uh, want to run the ball. Uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, they're especially bad against pass catching running backs. Guess what? Gurley's one of the best pass catching running backs in football. Uh, really a lot to like ownership, not too worried about. He's a guy I'm trying to fit into my lineups, especially on, on FanDuel. Yeah. I, uh, FanDuel, it's, I think it's pretty easy, pretty soft cap, you know, DraftKings. you know, last week he was at 10 K and I think he was like 15% owned in tournaments and he has not been crazy owned this year, but I think this is the week we see him, uh, for a lot of the reasons we've already talked about. There's not a lot of studs and, you know, Camaro's, you know, uh, He's not nearly as exciting as a player with Mark Ingram and in the matchup. So I think naturally people are going to play him. But if we see him at like 50% ownership in maybe not the Millie maker, but, you know, let's say you play a three entry max, $150 buy-in, and he's going to be like 50 to 55% owned in something like that. Man, I almost just want to bank on him getting 150 yards and one touchdown and being like, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's not a three touchdown game. Uh, so, you know, I think there's a lot of game theory to look at with Todd Gurley more so this week than we've had at any other week this season. Uh, all right, let's go to the value options. Uh, Scott, uh, pretty interesting name here. A guy who uh, has really stepped it up the last couple of weeks and, and honestly, like, really looks like the type of running back that would give the New England Patriots fits. And it's not Jordan Howard. There's your hint. Yeah, so this is a guy I, I, I was in love with last week, but I didn't have the, the stones to, to talk about on the podcast or, or write up in my Roto-Grinders article, unfortunately, but I uh, did have some ownership. Uh, through the first three weeks of uh, the season, Cohen, uh, Tariq Cohen averaged only 6.7 expected fantasy points per game over – the last three weeks, so two games, he's averaged 20. That ranks third most among running backs. Uh, he's averaging 9.0 carries per game, 8.5 targets per game. Kind of makes him look like a poor man's Alvin Kamara. And that's kind of like who he looks like talent-wise, too. So Alvin Kamara, 12.4 carries per game, 9.4 targets per game. And remember, you know, that was with uh, Mark Ingram off the field, uh, except for one game. Uh, he's been super productive, 27.5 actual fantasy points per game, fourth most among running backs those uh, the last three weeks. Uh, but more importantly, you know, the Chicago's offense has finally got their act together. Uh, Mitch Trubisky just had his two best career games in terms of passing yards. Uh, I don't think this is a two-week outlier. I think he's going to be a staple of Chicago's offense, and this is a great week uh, to play him. You know, New England ranks second worst in receiving fantasy points per game to opposing running backs over the last two seasons, only the Atlanta Falcons rank higher. And uh, we know that's a weakness for new England's past defenses. Uh, there's a great dead spin article with uh, pepper Johnson in it. And he, there's like a, a significant, like three blurbs devoted to the fact that pass catching running backs scare Belichick because that's a weakness to his scheme, you know, you need really talented uh, uh, coverage linebackers that that the Patriots don't have right now. Make a, and he just has yeah crazy speed too. Like man, I right New England their defense just looks like a step slower this season. Um, even though you know they they won last week, it was <laughs> it, it didn't come easily. Um, now Tyler, yours uh, is interesting because he's not a guy really on my radar too much. I'm the Jags homer, too. If anybody would love TJ Yeldon, be this guy. But uh, tell me why you like him so much as a value. And 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 I'm going to challenge you in into explaining why I should like him more than Sony Michelle, who is, uh, I believe, cheaper than Yeldon on DraftKings this week. 
Okay. Uh, well, I like Yeldon a lot because uh, I think the poor guy just can't come up, can't catch a break when it comes to game script. I've been blown out the last two weeks against the Chiefs and the Cowboys. I think this is the first week where we see Yeldon get some high quality rushing touches to supplement that receiving work. He's averaged 17 touches per game over those last two game last three games and 97 yards from scrimmage. Um, that's all while Fournette's been out. I, I've seen Fournette looking like he'll be out till week 10. I've also heard rumors that he might be back this week. It sounds like it's all over the place. Um, but Jamal Charles didn't do it a thing last week as far as looking impressive. Five carries, five yards, one catch for five yards. Uh, he was very frustrating as I had Yeldon everywhere, and I kept yelling, put Yeldon in the game, and they would not. Um, and this Houston defense is just one that I think that uh, we can exploit on the ground. Uh, I think game – flow will be in their favor quite a bit um one thing we do have to monitor is injury news for yeldon it looked like he was a little bit banged up though yeah he did not practice today but it's wednesday we'll see what happens uh, over the next couple of days um with him now uh our duds of the week uh tyler you're rolling with uh the cleveland running back so uh so no carlos hyde for you i'll take no, he's uh, one of the first ones that I'm crossing off my list. Uh, the Buccaneers held other ground and pounders like him, like James Conner, Tevin Coleman, Jay Jai, and Jordan Howard to fewer than 12 DK points. Um, they're allowing the seventh fewest yards for carry at 3.8, the second fewest rushing yards to backs in total. Uh, well, where we do want to attack Tampa Bay is with versatile receiving backs, where they're allowing the sixth most receiving fantasy points to running backs. Um, poor coaching, though, has kept Duke Johnson on the sidelines. And I've given up expecting most coaches to take advantage of mismatches outside of a select few. Uh, for the record, Hugh Jackson does not make that select few. Um, I was about to say, like, <laughs> let's not think this is going to be the guy to do that. No, not, not at all. And this is going to be a high scoring game. Uh, it's likely going to draw a lot of DFS interest. And a lot of people are going to try to get bits and pieces here. I don't think the running back position is the way to go. Um, Duke has yet to exceed six touches in a game. High draws the really tough matchup on the ground, and then Chubb's just the guy dynasty players are waiting for. Yeah, I don't know what they were doing, re-signing Duke Johnson and then going out and drafting Nick Chubb. And, oh, yeah, we'll get Carlos Hyde, too. Hugh yeah. Jackson. That's interesting. Uh, all right. Again, another one that's not a huge surprise, but, you know, Saints running backs, that's what you got down here for our dud Uh we just need a quick explanation here. We know that Baltimore is really good versus running backs. Is that simply what it boils down for you here, Scott? Yeah. Uh, you know, we just saw on the, the schedule adjusted chart, just how good they are. And then if you break it down uh, in terms of rushing and receiving fantasy points, um, that's significant too. So they rank second best in rushing fantasy points per game allowed to opposing running backs. Uh, that's bad news for Mark Ingram, best in receiving fantasy points per game. Uh, to opposing running backs. So that's tough for Alvin Kamara. And we know now it's going to be a committee. Uh, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, if ownership's going to be low and you want to make a contrarian play, that's fine. Just know on paper, they are not uh, strong plays. All right, let's head up the uh, screen share. And again, one of the cool features that you get on your Pro Football Focus subscription is being able to look at their green line picks for the upcoming week. And as you can see on the screen, I've spotlighted one game for us, the Chargers and the Titans. Uh, and you'll also see that we've got uh, the, the list of games here near the top. And anytime you've got that green check mark, that means that there is something that the green line predicts very different than the market does. And in this particular game, uh, you know, I, I, I saw the notes from last week that apparently the game line liked the over just a little bit, and it's back on the over to, to the uh, point of seven points here in this Chargers Titans game, uh, as they kind of projected at 52 total points versus the market at 45. That is a huge, huge number. I don't know if, uh, if Britt put the old giblets down on the over last week, but I might need to do that this week with uh with this one now let's just kind of talk about this game kind of in general here scott i know you know Corey davis is a guy i think you wrote up in your um in your opportunity uh, expected opportunity column over there with pff uh is he at all viable for us you know last week was legitimately one of the worst offensive performances i'm gonna say maybe in the history of football you had the tennessee titans have 
14, no, 15 passes in 14 rushes or vice versa. They had 19 like total plays, it felt like. I don't even know how that's remotely possible, but that's what happened last week to go along with 11 sacks. Uh, can they get 22 points on the board this week against the Chargers on the road? What do you think, Scott? Uh, I don't know, but, but you know, Greenline really does like the over um, 52 points as opposed to 45 from the market. Um, I, I, yeah, th- this isn't on the main slate, right? No, this is the 930 London game. Oh, okay. this is the 930 London game. You're right. I didn't even think about it from the – no wonder I wasn't considering these guys. But if you're playing – Wake up at 930 and play the, the full <laughs> slate or the Thursday through week slate. We could, we could get plays from it. Yeah, if, you, if you're going to do that, I, I do like Corey Davis quite a bit. Um, I do want to bet the Chargers, but uh, I've already lost a bunch of money on Tennessee so far. Uh, they, they've beat the Jaguars, the Eagles, the Texans, and they've lost to the Dolphins, the Bills, and uh, the Ravens. That, that just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Um, but yeah, if you could play Corey Davis, I, I would play Corey Davis. He's he's cheap, you know. He's low ownership. He's due for positive regression. He's basically a top five uh, wide receiver in terms of market share. The problem is low volume, but you know, PFF saying they're going to lose by eight. So uh, ideally volume is going to be better this week and, and Chargers pass defense is not uh, as phenomenal as it was last year. In fact, they're, they're significantly below average. And I guarantee you, if you play those slates, those Thursday through, through Sunday, or if you wake up, they'll have a nine 30 through whatever slate, they might even have a showdown slate for the nine 30 game. Uh, people will not be playing guys from this slate very much because none of the analysis is done on them. Everything's looking towards the main slate. So you might get some fairly low ownership on that as well. So, uh, and if anything, you can just bet the over because the green line is telling us that the uh, market is inefficient here. So uh, you can see the PFF year to date accuracy over under is not great to this point. I think there's a rebound spot for him, but the spread is solid 55.6%. So check that out again, another great aspect here of the pro football focus um uh is that the elite does that come with or is that uh, just your standard there fellas uh so if you have pff elite you get access to pff green line the the uh, you know edge doesn't give you access to that gotcha all right well let's move on to our wide receivers here tyler and uh tell me your stud of the week yeah, so I'm not into this Browns rushing attack whatsoever, but I'm all over the passing attack. Really think it's a strong play. And we saw from Scott's um, DFB Beers report that uh, Tampa Bay is one of the teams we want to attack with our quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight end. Uh, Jarvis Landry here, um, guy that hasn't seen the, the production, but the opportunity's definitely been there. And I'll be honest, my most profitable weeks this season have come when targeting the Buccaneers. I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, Landry's seen 8.7 targets over the past three weeks. He inherits a get right spot here. They've allowed at least 23 points to opposing teams, top wide receiving options slot corner. MJ Stewart has allowed 22 of 25 targets to be caught, allowing 278 yards and four touchdowns on slot coverage. Those are among bottom two in each category. Um, Landry's a lock for me. I think I'll probably be going nearly hundred percent in tournaments with him. And, uh, Mr. Barrett, uh, Devin can give us a quick screen share here. I got the wide receiver cornerback matchup chart. And not surprising to see your stud of the week, number one on this list, Adam Thielen. Guy's a stud. Yeah, so so I'll actually say that the wide receiver who has the single best uh, matchup of the week uh, is Jarvis Landry. Just how abysmally bad Tampa Bay is to, to slot wide receivers, but number two, uh, number one by the wide receiver versus cornerback chart, number two by uh, any of my charts is Adam Thielen. Um, he leads all wide receivers and expected in actual fantasy points. He's on pace to break the single season target record, single season reception record, number two all time in receiving yards, number two in fantasy points. Jets are giving up 24.0 fantasy points per game to opposing slot wide receivers that ranks second most, but the seven fewest to outside wide receivers. And that discrepancy 
Uh, could be even worse this week. Buster Screen is out again. He's their slot corner. Tremaine Johnson, really good outside corner. He's coming back. And uh, <clears throat> Adam Thielen runs 61% of his routes. Should run those against Parry Nickerson. That sounds made up. Or like like some some yeah. just random British guy. Not a generated name. <laughs> he just, just sips tea all day and eats crumpets. Uh, a sixth round rookie, four inches shorter, twenty pounds lighter than Thielen. Uh, and in his first start last week, he gave up eight receptions, seventy four yards, and two touchdowns on twelve targets to mostly Chester Rogers, who we were all over last week. The week before, uh, filling in for Buster Screen, who went uh, out maybe I think late first quarter. Uh, gave up seven receptions, 95 yards on seven targets. Uh, he's the safest guy you could play. Best matchup he's going to have all year. Um, big upside. Yeah, lots of like. Don't tell me you guys are too young to remember Hardy Nickerson, please. Does that name um, ring a bell to you guys? Too young. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. I am just a freaking dinosaur here. Unbelievable. Oh. He was pretty good, and I'm hoping – I'm hoping he's related to this Nickerson. It doesn't mean that uh, the bloodlines, you know, everything worked out great, but he did make it to the NFL. Um, all right, let's get to values. And Tyler, I'm going to lead off with you because before the show, you gave the, whoa, I can't believe this guy's what, only 5K on FanDuel. Tell us about your value at wide receiver this week. Yeah, another top 10 guy on our wide receiver cornerback matchup chart, Jermaine Curse. Uh, he was one of the first guys that I was thinking about as soon as pricing was released. Very happy to see he was low on DK. I was even more surprised on Fandle at just how cheap he was. There's a, another guy that I'm probably going to go 100% in. Uh, Quincy Nunwa looks like he's facing a multi-week injury, leaving Curse to take over the slot receiving duties. Sam Darnold's targeted that area heavily so far in his career. Curse is coming off a nine target game where he caught all nine of his targets for 94 yards, uh, running 71% of his routes from the slot should face a lot of Mackenzie Alexander. Who's allowed 19 of 22 to be caught against him for 219 yards. I think it's just a quality path for curse to see quality targets and a uh, high reception total as well. All right, Scott, your value. Yeah, it's going to be Josh Gordon. <clears throat> he saw team high nine targets last week, including two deep targets and on Tuesday, Belichick said of Gordon, uh, I would just say his role is expanding weekly and we'll just see how it all plays out. Um, you know, if, if there were any other coach, you'd be like, okay, that's, that's pretty good news, but this is Belichick. So like when he says that, you know, that means the guy's going to see 25 targets next week. <laughs> He's going to put up Randy Moss numbers until he retires. Uh, and just remember Chicago ranks third worst in fantasy points for games to outside wide receivers. Uh, we did see on that schedule just a chart. Uh, they're really good against wide receiver ones, a lot weaker against wide receiver twos. Uh, so I'll have to do some some more digging into that, whether that means, uh, you know, Edelman's going to be the one in the bad matchup, funneling more targets for Josh Gordon, or if that means uh, Josh Gordon's going to be in the, the softer matchup. But just looking at outside uh, uh, wide receiver fantasy points allowed, looks like a great matchup for Josh Gordon. We know Chris Hogan, uh, race near the last in the league and in, in targets per route. So it's exciting. All right. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys uh, the duds or tell the people the duds so we can make sure we get rolling here. Um, Albert Wilson there for Tyler real quick. Uh, why Albert Wilson? You're not, is it just too many people are going to chase it or you don't like the matchup? Uh, what, what is it with Albert Wilson that you're hating this week? Uh, it's chasing. And the fact that of his 155 receiving yards last week, 136 of that was yards after the catch. I don't think that's repeatable. Demarius, uh, he's on the Thursday slate for Scott Barrett. I can give you a guy I like this week. I think Robert Woods is uh, a name to really consider. I, I think that uh, I think he's going to have a real good game with Cooper Cup, and I think he's going to absorb uh, a good number of those targets. Not a crazy price on him either. All right, want to get to tight ends here uh, real quick because I think this is a really interesting position because – uh, I don't think the numbers are there yet in terms of ownership, but both of you guys have David and Joku as your uh, value option. And I mean, it's been crystal clear all year long, Tyler, the tight ends against Tampa have just eaten every single week. And, you know, we've seen some crazy ownership this year at the tight end on value guys. And we've seen it dud a lot. 
And I agree. I think in cash games, I'm firing him in and him in this position. But if I'm get, if he's going to be like 30% owned this week, I am fine going underweight on David and Joku. But there's no denying that the matchup is excellent for him just looking at the numbers. But I'm definitely an ownership guy. And I'm, you know, we've seen, you know, Kittle got, got to like 33% in the Millie Maker one week. And, and I think Njoku could get there. I think he's, that many people are going to talk this up. Yeah, I could see 30% too by the time Sunday rolls around. Uh, and it's for good reasons. I mean, Tampa Bay has allowed a top five tight end in four of the last five weeks. They rank top five in most receptions, receiving yards, touchdowns, and fantasy points allowed opposing tight ends. Njoku will clearly be the chalk this week. Uh, Scott, you also have your stud is the same as Tyler's in Zach Ertz. Tell me why you like Ertz better than Gronk for, I believe, like a thousand less on DraftKings. Um, are you just out on Gronk? Do you think he's dust? Uh, well, talk to me about those two players and how you're kind of comparing them out. No, uh, I, I think I think Gronkowski is seriously injured and they're not going to target him unless they desperately need to, which is sort of the case what happened last week in the fourth quarter. He's seen just one red zone target all year. That's, you know, abysmal, especially for Gronkowski standards. This is his longest drought without a touchdown. You'd say he's due, but that's really the only argument you'd have. Meanwhile, but why, but where's this injury come from, though? Because why would they be playing him on – a hundred percent of snaps last week if he's hurt like that's that's where I don't get like I'd love to believe there's an injury but if you've got a guy who's hurt I don't think you'd be playing him that much uh, I think he's just a warrior and, and and I know there's a lot of playing time related bonuses in his uh, recent contract extension I don't know if it's directly snaps but it's it, it's a bunch of things like yards or whatever um, but Zach Ertz you know he's putting up wide receiver one fantasy numbers mid-range wide receiver one volume numbers all other tight ends suck uh you know he's Wentz's first read on every play he's their top receiver top target and carolina carolina ranks third worst in schedule adjusted fantasy points to tight ends I, i'm gonna make the bold call here uh i think gronk gets off the schneid this week um i think he scores two touchdowns i'm gonna be heavy heavy on gronk this week uh injury or not i mean they're like you've talked about Maybe he's due. Maybe that's not a good enough reason to play a guy, but I don't understand why they just won't target him in the red zone moving forward. And I think they will. And I think that when the opportunities come up, uh, they're going to go to him. So I like Gronk this week. I hope, I brain that the ownership stays in that 10% range this week because I will gladly go over. I think this is a breakout week for Gronk because the other thing to look at too is there's actually other weapons around. You've got Josh Gordon. You've got Edelman back. Sony Michelle can run the football, uh, especially early in the year, like that matchup versus Jacksonville. They literally had no other threat whatsoever on the field, and uh, Jacksonville just completely took him out of the game plan. I think he gets back in it this week, and uh, I'm on Team Gronk to score a couple of touchdowns. Uh, all right. I think that is going to do it for us this week on Pro Football Focus. Britt will be back with you guys next week. Probably going to be all tan, although you know, I don't know if guys in Syracuse can actually even get tan because, you know, he's, he's, he's white as they can. He's whiter than I am. Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, Britt will be back. And uh, Scott, Tyler, thanks for your time. Thanks for doing the show. Hopefully, I did all right in this role and uh and know that uh, if you have not subscribed to pro football focus you need to it is an absolute essential part of my weekly process of getting ready to play dfs and uh the wonderful thing about it is it's not just picks obviously they're going to tell you the plays that they like but on mondays you get all the snap counts you get all the grades you get all that kind of stuff and the pricing on it pretty reasonable over there at Pro Football Focus. So if you want to be a better daily fantasy player, make it part of your process as well. Thanks to Devin for producing, as always, here uh, on rotogrinders.com this uh, Wednesday night. And, of course, we'll talk to you next week. For Tyler and Scott, I'm Dan. Good luck in your contests, and we will see you.